Good morning, students. My name is So Prasad, biology teacher. Today, we let us discuss the concept in the tenth class, nutrition. First lesson: the nutrition food supply system. Nutrition. In the nutrition food supply system, before going to know the concept, what is nutrition? Nutrition means procurement or intake of nutrients. Is called nutrition. What are nutrients? Nutrients means the nutrients or chemical substances which are useful for body growth and development. So first, nutrition means the nutrition means intake intake of nutrients the nutrients these nutrients are chemical substances chemical substance so these chemical substances which are useful for body growth and development here these nutrients are two types which you know that macronutrients another one is micronutrients what are macronutrients like that? Carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. These are considered as macronutrients. And what are micronutrients? Micronutrients are vitamins and minerals. Vitamins and minerals of micronutrients. Generally, food is essential for every living organism on the earth. So here in this one, we know that food is essential for every living organism. It is useful for body growth and development. And also it maintains the body temperature. But this procurement of nutrients are different from one organism to another organism. So here in this one, procurement is different to unicellular organism like amoeba to multicellular organism like human beings. Here in this one, in this concept, we let us discuss the concepts of autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition. First, we let us see the concept autotrophic nutrition. So before going to that, the types of nutrition, the nutrition are in different types of nutrition are there. In earlier classes, we know that the nutrition, in the types of nutrition, here basically there are three types of nutrition, there are two types of nutrition are there. One is autotrophic nutrition, another one is heterotrophic nutrition. You know that. What are autotrophic nutrition? Autotroph means plants that prepare their own food. That is autotrophs. And heterotrophic, say examples of the autotrophs are plants or the autotrophs. And heterotrophs, they can't be able to prepare their own food. For the food, they depend on others. Here again, these heterotrophic nutrition is three types. One is Saprophytic nutrition. Another one is parasitic nutrition. And third one is holozoic nutrition. Here there are three types of heterotrophic nutrition are there. One is saprophytic nutrition, second one is parasitic nutrition, and third one is holozoic nutrition. Here in the back, saprophytic nutrition. Here in this one, complex organic molecules converts into simple inorganic molecules, but outside the body. For example, mouse and parasite. Here in this one, 
the organisms they live in are on the host organism example for example leech hello white nutrition intake of food like the complex food and then converts into simple substances inside the body that is holozoic nutrition for example protein it converts into amino acids for example that is for example proteins it converts into amino acids that is inside the body inside the body convert the complex one into simple substances that is holozoic nutrition so children first we will see the autotrophs auto and troph auto means self auto means self troph troph means nourishment it is a greek polyse autotrophic nutrition is a greek polyse auto means self troph means nourishment here in this first let us see autotrophic nutrition auto means self troph means nourishment this is greek polyzer in plants of autotrophs plants prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis they obtain the nutrients and minerals water and minerals from the soil and air from in the atmosphere so by using light energy they prepare their own food here at first in this one more helmet more helmet is it one thing plants not only obtain the nutrients from the soil but also from other sources plants not only absorb the water and minerals from the soil but also from other sources that is and the plants are universal food providers plants are universal food providers they provide food to all the living organisms on the earth and the next one, here in this one plants prepare their own food by which process by which process photosynthesis by which process photo synthesis photo means light synthesis prepare by using the solar energy they convert the simple inorganic molecules into complex organic molecules the photosynthesis is a photochemical reaction is a photo chemical reaction during which carbohydrates are synthesized here in this one there is a green colored substance chlorophyll chlorophyll it is a pigment the pigment is a molecule which traps the solar energy so photosynthesis is a photochemical reaction during which carbohydrates are synthesized from simple inorganic molecules like carbon dioxide water by utilizing the sunlight and chlorophyll till there are several years so many scientists they can make several experiments on photosynthesis but they try to formulate the equation for photosynthesis in the year of 1931 in the year of 1931 cb vanil cb vanil he formulated the first equation for photosynthesis he formulated the first equation for photosynthesis in his according to cb vanil equation co2 plus 2 h2o reduced by h2 light by chlorophyll and c h2o plus h2o plus o2 according to this statement for every molecule of carbohydrate one molecule of water and one molecule of oxygen is released this is the statement set by the vanil cb vanil at first we formulate the equation this is simple and basic equation for photosynthesis according to this equation 
for the synthesis of one molecule of glucose, it releases one molecule of water and one molecule of oxygen. And later on, several scientists they conduct several experiments. They also conduct experiment on purple sulfur bacteria named Vanille. Conduct experiment on purple sulfur bacteria. And also, he said that light plays a major role. Role of light. Role of light in the process of photosynthesis. But actually, they don't have the photosynthesis. But here, in this, they use as a H2S as a starting material instead of H2O. Whenever we use H2S as a starting material, the sulfur is released into the atmosphere. But instead of oxygen, instead of oxygen, sulfur is released into the atmosphere. So later on, Robert Hill, Robert Hill, he said one thing, oxygen is released only from the water. Oxygen is released into the atmosphere is only from water. Finally, the equation was 6 CO2 plus 12 H2O will give rise to light by chlorophyll and C6H12O6 plus 6O2 plus 6H2O. This is the final equation for photosynthesis. Here for the synthesis of one molecule of glucose, it will have 6 molecules of carbon dioxide. So whatever the oxygen is released into the atmosphere is only from water. Is only from water. It is said by the Robert Hill. So plants are universal food providers. Plants are autotrophs. Why? How? Plants not only prepare the carbohydrates but also prepare lipids and proteins. That's why these plants are autotrophs. But animals in the case of animals, they won't prepare their own food. They depend on animals, they depend on plants for the food. Here, based on this equation, we develop the concept first. Again, I write the equation. Here in this one, this equation is very important. So again, I write the equation for photosynthesis. 6 CO2 plus 12 H2O will give rise to light by chlorophyll C6 H12O6 plus 6O2 plus 6 H2O as yes. right first here is this one glucose that is, the plants at first they prepare the carbohydrates in the form of glucose. Later, it stores in the form of starch. You know that first it prepares glucose in the transfers in the form of a sucrose. It stores in the form of starch. But what is the one activity is there in our world? That is, how can you prove that starch is synthesized? So it is a simple experiment to know the presence of starch. So to do this experiment, we require one glass beaker, test tube, and methylated spirit, asbestos gauze, and Bunsen burner. So these are the kind of brush. So here, at first in this one, take a one glass beaker, and fill the glass beaker with water and there is a tripod stand and in this, this is one cell burner and this is beaker and
and this is tripod stand and this is Bunsen burner and, and then the test tube this test tube is filled with methylated spirit spirit and this is test tube and boil the leaf on the water bath not directly boil the leaf on the water bath so why should we boil the leaf what happens when we Boil the leaf in methylated spirit. Whenever we boil the leaf in the methylated spirit, the leaf is free from chlorophyll. The leaf is, leaf is, that is, removes chlorophyll. So boil the leaf on the water bath and take the leaf with the help of your brush. You should take care. We never take the leaf with the help of fingers because this is a methylated spirit. Then we damage the epithelial tissues of the skin. So then we take the leaf with the help of a brush and place the leaf on a petri dish. Place the leaf on a petri dish and put a drop of iodine. That is, put a drop of iodine. Whenever we apply the iodine on the leaf, then the leaf it turns into bluish black in color. Immediately the result is bluish black. It changes into bluish black in color. That is the that indicates the presence of starch. But in the laboratory, if there is no iodine, then all the way to raise and solution is beta -dine. If iodine is not there, then we use the methodology. So by this experiment, we prove that starch is synthesized in plants by the process of photosynthesis. Here, another one. What are the factors? What are the factors for the photosynthesis? The fact and the fact is, uh, look at this, carbon dioxide is one factor, water is one factor, light and chlorophyll. Among these, carbon dioxide, water and light, these three are external factors. Chlorophyll is internal factor. First, we well, let us see one by one the concepts like that. In the case of, first of all, Light and chlorophyll, carbon dioxide and water. In this one, water and chlor photosynthesis. Water and photosynthesis. Water. Warm element. Warm element. He said that water is essential for increase the mass of the plant it is useful for to increase to increase the mass of the plant increase the mass of the plant and here in this one what is the essential and to increase the mass of the plant and that one A and photosynthesis. A plants absorb the gases from the atmosphere. Joseph Priestley. Joseph Priestley in the rough. 1774 
he identified the oxygen. But later on in the year of 1775, Lavoisier named oxygen. Name oxygen. Okay, Joseph Fisley in the year 1774 discovered the oxygen and now is the name oxygen. Here in this one, oxygen is released into the atmosphere. Oxygen is released into the atmosphere. John Engine Hall, here in this one, a, uh, Joseph Fisley, he said one thing, one of the important things also. That is, air is essential for the survival of living organisms. How? He proved that. So, Joseph is the conduct experiment, Benzo experiment. Joseph is this experiment. Please, please. Please, please experiment. Joseph is the he said that here in this one, he used a one candy, mouse, meat plant, and bell chop. First, he lighted the candy, took in a bell chop, but after some time, he put off the light. Put off the light. And when he got the mouse, the mouth is suffocated. Suffocate. Well, when you taste the milk plant and put the burning candy, light the candy and the mouse, then the burning candy continuously lighted and the mouse alive. Here, like this in this one. Okay. Here, what? The Priestley, by conducting this experiment, finally he concluded that plants restore the air, whatever the burning candy and the animals release. Okay. So there is so air is essential for the survival of living organisms. The next. Here in this one, another one, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is essential for the process of photosynthesis. So each and every factor is important. If any one of the factors is oxide, there is no synthesis of glucose. So here in this one, carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is essential. is essential for the process of photosynthesis. To conduct this experiment, we need one potted plant, the plant with long and narrow leaves and also a KOH, white mouth body and iodine solution. Here, first we will take the Potted plants. We'll take the potted plants. The plant with long and narrow leaves. Before going to conduct the experiment, keep the plant in dark place. When we keep the plant in dark place, the plant is free from starch. What is the purpose? When we keep the plant, in the dark place, the plant is free from starch. On the day of experiment, they take a wide mouth glass bottle. Wide mouth glass bottle. On the day of experiment, they take the wide mouth glass bottle. This is glass bottle. And this is what we plant. And in the potassium hydroxide solution of the list, KOH. The purpose of this potassium hydroxide is it absorbs the carbon dioxide. 
potassium hydroxide absorbs the carbon dioxide and the rain gave split cork through the split cork inside the half of the leaf inside the bottle and the half of the leaf put aside outside the bottle and keep the apparatus and the sunlight and after 2 to 3 hours then detach the leaf from the plant and remove the leaf from the bottle and do the iodine test before we know that how you do the starch test and apply the iodine and whenever you apply the iodine on the leaf the leaf form which is exposed to the atmosphere or outside the bottle it turns into bluish black and the leaf form which is present inside the bottle that is that will turn into brown color that means this is inside the bottle the portion of the leaf which locates inside the bottle here all the factors are there for this leaf water is available and lime is available and chlorophyll is there in the leaf but one of the factors carbon dioxide is offset inside the bottle so if there is absence of this carbon dioxide there is no synthesis of glucose so by this experiment we concluded that CO2 is essential for the process of photosynthesis and another one more factor in the case of this light